a very long interview because she worked very hard uh, all these days with uh, Celia, Celia Rayfeld from Berlin. And she's a Dakini and warrior of bliss and a midwife and an expert in orgasmic birth giving and tantric rebirthing. Um, Celia, was it very different to work with Dutch students from the Connection University than with other groups? No, it wasn't actually any, any different. No, it's always a challenge, it's always um, <laughs> a change, a birth into being, and I think it's, there's always people who can do it easy and there's always people who have a little harder way to go. I would not say it was any different than anybody. Mm -hmm. And what makes it some people have a harder way? What are the factors that influence? Well, it's a, it's also about the consciousness and the understanding and a lot of people just uh, make it hard for themselves. They just reflect it all through their mind, their own thinking and their their understanding that they have to do something, but they're actually not willing to go a step farther and just go on free fall, just trust, just surrender, just jump and say, okay, I don't like the day, I don't like the food, I don't like the name of the teacher, I don't care, you know, yeah. I want to change something, I'll just go for it, whatever comes up. And some people are just didn't understand that that's what they have to do. So actually surrendering is very important to what is given during such a workshop. So yeah, sometimes it, it blossoms and unfolds a little later and um, yeah, it's just go for it and see what it brings to you. Mm -hmm. And it's never for nothing, nothing you do. Yeah. It will always show you something, it will mirror you something, something will come up. And what is so important for adult people about rebirthing to have this experience? Well, I think this is actually the core and the base experience of any tantric education because um, this is where we create the so-called comfort zone and um, everybody in all the workshop calls talks about the comfort zone all the time. This is where it happens. This is where the creation actually happens. It happens in your brain and during the time you're in the womb of your mother or even in the time where you're on your way into your mother like your arriving soul, and during your early childhood. And you get a lot of imprints where your brain is not aware of at that moment what is good information and what is bad information for you. So you all take it in on your heart plate, and then your body thinks that you need these kind of behaviors or um, environments to be happy. And uh, whatever you experienced, you will always search for in your life. And it was bad experience which don't serve you, then you will constantly on the run to look for something that I gives bet. you this feeling yeah. again and again and again till you finally realize it and break that loop. And that's why our rebirthing is for, to realize if there are traumatic or bad patterns. Yeah, it's a, it's a class where you can really um, try to change your cellular memory, meaning all the things you have subconsciously taking in to bring them up through these exercises and then re-imprint or reset them with positive new imprints that mm. you basically have a whole body reset and can start new. So it is a birth into being, a rebirth in any kind of levels. What is actually the, the if you would subscribe the or the or tell about the relationship between tantra and birth giving, how would you? Philosophize about it. Well, when I say I work as a Dakini and a midwife, for me it actually doesn't make a difference anymore because I work with the conscious use of sexual energy or let's call it Kundalini, let's call it life source energy. It's all sexual energy. It's our core energy and it's the strongest energy that we have in our body. And every cell of us is made out of sexual energy. I mean, that's what we came for. And um, this for me it's it's one thing. I mean, Tantra is also called the conscious use of sexual energy. So um, in, in the delivery, it's just such a nice process we have been given, which has been given to us and all the things we have to be reteached later on, we already do there. Mm -hmm. The women are able to combine the spirituality and the sexuality. Um, they're grounded, they go into expansion 
they know how to move energy through their body uh, and also to set free all these uh, hormones which make the so-called tantric orgasm. And they also are able to go in these seats of frequency, which we also do during tantric orgasms, to be in that mindless space. So actually, it's it almost looks like the same act sometimes. And do you teach women to come in that state during delivery? Yes, actually, I don't have to teach them. I just have to reactivate it mm -hmm. because we all know how that works. Just in this society and the imprints of the matrix and the environment, we, we completely shut that down. So actually, you just have to create a space and actions and teachings and that can be hypnobirthing, that can be breathing, that is meditation, that is activating and cultivating that energy in your body. These are movement, all these things to be in the element of water to uh, reactivate actually what we already know. Hmm. Yeah. So actually it's remembering. It's remembering. Yeah, on a very deep For the women in this case, yeah, yeah, it's remembering. Yes. Yeah. Because we come out of this contraction in the inside of the womb actually into the expansion of life and the kids are naturally ecstatic they don't think about all these things they act like they act they move they're happy they're angry they all do all these things and then we get to teach to go back into our contraction mm -hmm. and then the rebirthing and the tantra brings you back into expansion yeah and that's where in they full, live in full yeah. presence and yeah. um finding your path, your passions, and be fully in alignment with what you do and what you're here for. And how can women support each other to get more expanded, not only during pregnancy or delivery, but in general? What could we do for each other? Well, I think this is one of the major solutions that we have to look at at the moment to create more sisterhood. I think that's what we really, really need. So support each other on our dreams and um, worship each other and see the beauty in each of us and what all of us has to give in their unique way and not be jealous on each other and go into competition and fighting fight, and yeah. moaning, bitching and complaining all the time instead of helping each other to yeah, each of us blossom in our way and uh, serve what we have to serve to the group. And I think also women have a very beautiful way to uh, be with each other and they should also be a lot more physical mm -hmm. and starting, you know, from spreading more oxytocin, being together, dancing together, cooking together, brushing each other's hair, it's just symbols. But really, yeah, create this a lot of oxytocin, mm -hmm. these lovely environments mm -hmm. instead of uh, putting rocks in each other's way. Mm -hmm. But also in this modern urban world, it's very hard for women to have this more, like, say, tribal or more communal activities. We have no time for it. We, how can we overcome these problems in, in our society well, with this we very no, fast pace? Yeah, well, yeah. We have no time for it. Well, we, have, we are missing something and all the people are on the search and we have to start somewhere. And I think the people who realize that they will change something and they will make they will make time for it. And it can be one day a week where you start with it. And as soon as the people get this understanding and this feeling how much that fulfills them and how much smile and laughter that brings into yeah. their world, they come back. Yeah. And it gets more and more and more. And I mean, that can be inviting friends for dinner. There's little things. Go to massage or yoga classes and Take your time for yourself and for your sisters. Where did you meet Tantra in your life? Um, it's funny. I would say I always had Tantra in my life. I maybe just gave it a name a little later. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was always existing and very present, even in my job, working with this all the time. Uh, and what my body told me and the people I was with and constantly feeling that that's not it, that can't yeah, yeah. be it. It's just not um, yeah, how it's supposed to be. Yeah, and then I finally find a man, or found a man, or he found me, or we found yeah, each yeah. other, I don't know, um, who I had this first time, this experience with that I really uh, felt like, uh, yeah, felt like home, felt like 
this is really what satisfies and fulfills and uh, um, touches my whole being. And really being seen, really being connected to the core energy and um, yeah, expanding, going beyond my mind. Which was really was like, he a lover or just a tantric teacher? Well, first it was just somebody I met dancing. Mm -hmm. And um, the first time I, I accused him to put something in my drink <laughs> yeah. because I was almost going in Satori and I screamed at him the next morning and oh. I thought, and I was crying, I was totally lost because I thought he was, yeah, he was doing something yeah. to me. So I started the horse from the other end, so I made this experience of being with somebody going into Satori and then I decided, okay, I never felt that complete in my entire life and then I went, okay, this is what I want every day, yeah, yeah. every breast, every moment, so that's where I started to come from this way, then mm -hmm. search how I can realize this. And then I got in contact with uh, a lot of more of tantric people. He was a tantra teacher, but that wasn't the the point where I picked him yeah. because we didn't really talk. It was just a um, energy. Yeah. Age of attraction. A magnetism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you see um, the role of tantra in society, in in modern society, Western society? in the nearest future? Actually, I think we can survive without it. I mean, if we don't realize these things, everything will change, frequencies change, energies change, and you already see what's happening around here everywhere. And we really need to understand how to work with these energies, prepare our bodies in either ways, through food, through yoga, through conscious life, living, and also uh, use the strongest energy in our body mm -hmm. to to really yeah be and stay alive and mm -hmm. fully connected with the things that happen. Um, in Tantra, there is a lot of energy work, and for let's say as Westerners, uh, we consider energy energy something where we heat our houses and you know solar energy. Or could you explain how energy moves through our bodies? How you can experience that? What means exactly tantric energy? It's hard to, to put in work. I mean, it's like, it's like the fool that, that, that you would have in your car. It's like your core essence. It feels like, uh, yeah, everything, yeah, my, 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 my life juice, my mm -hmm. mojo, my life source energy, everything that moves as fluid through my body. And I mean, and it's vibrant and um, yeah, I mean, if I pay a certain attention to it or have a certain way, it, it stays like this. It constantly vibrates, it's in a movement, it feels like different colors, different temperatures, and it feels, it feels complete. Mm -hmm. And I think in Tantra also you learn when you say conscious use, you, you learn how to move it, you learn how to share it with others, it uh, spreads into your environment. I mean, you attract other people, animals, children, you can really feel how that attracts your whole field. And um, yeah, it's hard to describe how it feels, but it's a, yeah, it's a fluid, vibrant, uh, expanding feeling. But it sounds to me that Tantra is almost the lost key to paradise. Yeah, for me it is. For yeah. me right now it's the, it's the only key. I mean, you can give it a lot of names, mm -hmm. but I think this is the only way how it will work. Um, well, in, in the West we see that we most concentrate on Tantra that is essential, that deals with massage, touch, relationship issues, but we also have, let's say, more in the Eastern cultures, classical Tantra that deal with uh, difficult exercises to come, well, the fastest path to enlightenment, actually. Um, how do you see that, this, this huge difference between the conceptions of Tantra in the West and the ideas and all traditions in the East? I think they all have their place and they all work because I mean we live in the environments we, we grow up in so this is also keys which will work for us and I mean there are many ways to roam as usual mm -hmm. and I think in Tantra is the same I mean as, as soon as you're conscious about these energies and how to work with this there are different doors you have to pass and I mean that can include 
any kinds of directions that might be a door for you or opens into something what you have been suppressed or which has been blocked and I think all these aspects come in it if it's shamanic or if it's BDSM or is it uh, that you change your complete uh, way of eating or living or it might be um, yeah I mean your ancestors the quantum physics all of these have part mm -hmm. of it so mm -hmm. it all comes in and just depends on the door which is the one you need to take and for the mm -hmm. people who grow up on different places of the earth they grow up with other traditions others religions other things so I think each of us has their place and their way would be yeah. wonderful if we could mix it yeah. and uh, find shortcuts for all of us because we support each other mm -hmm. and serve the best to each other but depends if that works or not. Mm -hmm. Lately I have been busy organizing a conference about sexuality and consciousness. Why do you do that and what's your inspiration there? My inspiration is basically like that what I just said before. It's also like giving birth to another baby. <laughs> um, I wanted to create something where I can um, put these together, what I just said, that I want people to change their way of thinking, to not be scared of all these things that come up. And I wanted to give them the opportunity to have a view on different topics that might help to adjust them to what will come in the future and I called it a conference because if it would be a festival it would be too scary for a lot of people to come the Why times, is that? Is well, that? The times are too long of maybe some workshops yeah. and then they're not sure if this is the right workshop and they, mm, and they maybe paid money for it and maybe mm -hmm. they have to do something they don't like or they're afraid of and if it's a conference and there are short presentations maybe little safe exercises then they can have a yeah, three-day experience of getting a view on, for example, in this time, 18 different topics. And then they can listen and look, oh, these are normal people. Or they can look, hey, that's how I might look when I take care of things. They can be inspired. They can look what resonates. Mm -hmm. They can maybe go for the door which scares them the most. Whatever um, appears to you, you can make a step forward to. And I think this uh, setting is a lot less scary for people um, than making the first big step to go mm -hmm. to a festival. Mm -hmm. And it's also about networking, of course. Each of us have to share experiences, have to share opinions. We're all unique, so we unite them in a conference and also uh, yeah, help to spread the world and maybe change things. And it's also an enormous energy when all these teachers come mm -hmm. together and manifest an idea, a vision, a philosophy, and try to move things. This is also brilliant when mm. we can make these things happen. Mm. Are there still, is there still room to announce yourself, to, to be a participant there? A participant, yes. You can, of course, uh, most welcome to join the conference. There's still room for people to come as a regular participant. It's a three-day event. Uh, you can all check it under unitedbliss.com. Uh, we keep the cost quite low, so it's possible for almost everybody to attend. If there are special needs, you can also address them to the organizers. Um, that will also include yoga in the morning. There will be a fire performance, a crystal ball performance. There will be ecstatic dance. That sounds um, awesome. Bondage performance. <laughs> Um, a Yoni Puya ritual, and this is all included in the price. So it's going to be a, a big uh, bubble of fun. <laughs> I'm learning. Bliss. If we would say, okay, for the future, is it important that Tantra is going to meet Western science so that we have not only our own accounts, yeah, where we talk about Tantra from our own experiences, it's very important, but also that we are able to measure things, what it means for people to have tantric orgasms, do meditation. How do you see that? Would that be helpful? I think that would definitely be helpful. Like I said, we all come from different perspectives and um, we live in a mindful world. So of course it makes sense to do researches on it and um, 
improve things and uh, make it transparent for people through writing, through experiments, and try to somehow put in uh, in words and in physical uh, possibilities to make people understand. Is it important that more and more people will understand Tantra and invite it in their lives? Or is it something really excuse for for you know people who really like to have something different? And no, no. I think really Tantra, if you want to keep it very simple and you say sexual energy is the strongest energy in your body, who would not want to use the strongest energy mm -hmm. in your body to do whatever you want to do? And if you have a fulfillment in your body, everything solves in your life. You know, you, you need... Um, you're less dependent on the outside because you're fulfilled with love and happiness for yourself mm -hmm. on your inside. So you're less attracted to things you have to buy or a certain way you have to look or to smell or to mm -hmm. act because you set yourself free from this. Mm -hmm. You definitely need uh, less things to suppress emotions, feelings, or um, yeah, make yourself unattractive or more attractive to the outside so you will be more conscious about your food maybe have less food you need less sleep you will do more sport it will change any aspects of your life you will be more balanced and happy you're happier with your children yeah. you're happier with your work everything goes easy it feels like you're the first time in love these weeks where you just yeah. fly on your little that's how it feels all the time all the time <laughs> <laughs> It should so, be very inspiring. <laughs> yeah, and also many years. I mean, it yeah, doesn't I mean, play the down. People, no, the people really um, um, have integrated in their life. And I think you can tell if they really walk the talk, if they really live mm -hmm. what they're talking about, you can tell they're a lot younger, they're aging a lot less, they're in very, very good body conditions, they're very calm. It gets more quiet and quiet around them. The mind gets more quiet. Mm -hmm. And they're just in a very uh, peaceful state of being. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what's the difference? Because we could also choose to do a meditation course to use that too. What's the difference with Tantra and, and the other mindful techniques? Well, meditation... Well, Tantra includes the energy. It, it includes more aspects, actually, what you can work with. Um, and also, like I said, on movement, it's, it's more aspects to come to the final, I wouldn't call it solution, but mm -hmm. somehow like this. Everything else on its own, I think I, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. There will always come to a point mm -hmm. where you have to go one step mm -hmm. further. It's the same Tantra is life and yoga is life. Mm -hmm. And one starts uh, with the potential, the other is surrendering at a certain point. Mm -hmm. The Tantric people have to do some yoga. Because the body needs to be in a perfect shape to work with all this energy. The yogi people need somehow the tantra because they don't know um, how to actually set the energy free at a certain point and yeah. surrender. Yeah. So it's all going to be one at a certain point. Yeah. So I don't think one yeah. goes without the other. Yeah. So actually it's which, which manner or which way you prefer that, that suits you best. Yeah, actually it does. Is there a certain character type for people that are made to be tantric? I don't no. believe in it, no. I think everybody is somehow tantric deep inside. Mm -hmm. But still not discovered. No. no. But I think everybody has, I mean, this core feeling. You want, you want to be love, you want to live love, you want to be in your tribe, you want to be seen, you want to be in your full power, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to live your passion and your truth. And I think each of us wants that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Work this weekend with a lot of exercises. How, for the students in the school, can they continue, from your point of view, to have this feeling to be born every time they experience a new transformation? You know, how can they continue with that? What What would be best exercise for that, or best attitude? Uh, 
Well, the attitude, it's always good to, to think nothing is impossible, actually. And for me, the key word for everything is expansion. Mm -hmm. And it's really consciousness, awareness and expansion. And to really, um, yeah, of these neutral points you hopefully have after being reborn, to really start watching, um, to go back into your heart and your mm -hmm. intuition and really go for what feels right for me. And don't go for compromises uh, and don't do what doesn't feel good to you to not create new layers and not yeah yeah basically new layers mm -hmm. and it's also about really a healing about being conscious about it of course but really the key word for me is expansion in any thing we do and the moment when we expand what will we do to our surrounding to the world well, it will change a lot. I mean, you might step on somebody's feet, you might get reactions you haven't been thought about, but I think at the end it all comes out best because if you stand in your own power and your integrity, um, yeah, people will honor that and things around change and people will maybe pick up on it and uh, do the same. I mean, you attract what you reflect on the same mm -hmm. thing and maybe also a good key for for students to really see the potential and the people which are running around you yeah. to really see that they mirroring you yeah and don't yeah really whoever you meet meet a person that always makes you angry don't be angry at this person think about why this person makes me angry all the time and where does this come from to really use the world as your mirror mm -hmm. and you don't need a therapy or a workshop actually it's it's constantly there mm -hmm. everybody mirrors your your children your what happens around you it's you have a constant teaching if you want to which you get served for free every day every minute so tantra is actually the school of experience yes like i said wisdom comes with experience yeah why is it that in the tantric scene and world and domain in the West, there are so many people who, I would say, are not aware of that and are not supportive towards each other and do it in a very different way? What will, I mean, it seems that we attract also a bunch of people who well, have very different intentions here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's also still... The matrix, so yeah. you can make um, a lot of money, you can live highly manipulating people with guru behavior, and these are people who just haven't uh, taken care of their ego yet, of course, and yeah. just pretend they're at a point which they're definitely not. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that you really found a sincere and um, wise Tantra teacher? Yeah, for me it really goes about feeling it. If I if I'm around that person and I feel he fully with all his love and all his intention walks his talks, that's what I'm saying. That I really see he lives what he teaches and what he tells people yeah. into his core. That doesn't need to be a hundred percent and that doesn't need to be always my way. Mm -hmm. But each of them has my respect as soon as I can see mm -hmm. the people really um, live what they what they tell others. Is there still a man in your life if you love a tantric man? Well, there is a new tantric man in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Yeah. yeah. And um, what is so tantric about your relationship with him? What is so tantric about it? Well, now we're going into the interesting details. Um, well for me a tantric, well, any relationship I want to have at the moment tantric or non-tantric mm -hmm. is a is a conscious relationship i don't uh, yeah i don't want these usual behaviors anymore i want um i want to go deep with a person and i don't want to get hang up on things that my surroundings set mm -hmm. up i want to choose with this person how i want us to look like <laughs> and that can be any way mm -hmm. and I want to heal mm -hmm. and I want a person to heal with because that person mirrors me and that person um, is really able to let me be me, mm -hmm. see me 
with all my aspects, my dark sides, my lights, and um, let me explain and yeah, help me to mm -hmm. find my truth and uh, find his own truth and overcome jealousy and uh, other things we put up to make our lives miserable. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's also about a true sexual connection. It doesn't have any value for me to have friction-based sex. It's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't feed me, it doesn't fulfill me. Mm -hmm. I want also somebody I can really, yeah, dive deep with and uh, who I can really truly have a lovely connection with. Yeah. So and very sincere. Yeah, and really <laughs> sincere. And really true and honest and transparent. Mm. Because if people think, let's say in general about tantric sex, they think of some magic sexual action, but it's actually very grounded, very it's very normal, sex. very yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's the core of the connection of two human beings and two energies. Yeah. So we started a school, you know, we started an academy in tantra, actually a tantric university. I mean, Tantra has been for a very long time underground stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not very much in the open, also not in the West, also not in the East. Um, what do you think? What will be the future of such a school? I mean, it's, it's quite brave what we did to put that school in the, in the middle of a Western country. And, and well, I believe it's quite brave, but it seems like there's still no other way to get certain people's attention. We still need to provide some kind of frame, some kind of rules, some kind of uh, safety to yeah, allow ourselves or others to um, accept the things which is happening. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it wasn't happening, but all of a sudden to bring it out of the darkness into the light and into the consciousness of people and maybe get also some more mindful people um, realizing that this is the way they could also go because we catch mm -hmm. them out of a different corner. It's, a, it's an amazing idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you have more questions for me then? No, I'm just uh, very happy to support that thought. <laughs> and uh, yeah. for me it's... Uh, yeah, it's very important. The sisterhood, yeah. the brave women who stand yeah. up for these things and uh, we have to fight a lot of fears and we have to stand up for these things and um, yeah, we really uh, have to be true and really trust mm -hmm. and surrender in what we think our soul, our path. And that's already a lot, a big task now to fulfill yeah. that. I thank you very much and I thank you that you was here and that you shared such a beautiful knowledge and wisdom with us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>